So here we have the 1 watt 520 nanometer green laser PLE Mini from Jet Lasers. And this will be a quick video review detailing the performance and characteristics as compared to the 465 nanometer sky blue PLE Pro, the 3 watt 445 nanometer Sage, and a Laser 303 clone 532 nanometer, which I believe to be about 80 to 100 milliwatts. It's supposed to be 100. Right off the bat, you can see that the PLE Mini is a very, very, very nice size to hold, especially compared to the massive PLE Pro. It's ever so slightly larger than the Sage, slightly more expensive, but it's a nicer color. And it's a little bit larger than your typical 303 clone, but not drastically speaking. Initial impressions of the host are incredibly high. I'm in love with this particular pointer, not just because of its physical size and the fact that it is very nice and rugged, but because it has a few de key details and aspects that I really like. So number one, it has a rubber beam stop um, that will protect you in case your laser is turned on when you don't want it to be. Whereas the PLE Pro actually has a threaded one, which I've removed right now, but that screws in and out of the front of the laser. The problem with that is over time, especially if you're really pulling and tugging or putting weird forces on that, is it'll start to leave tiny little, nearly invisible flakes of metal on the lens of your laser, which can scratch it. So this eliminates that problem, and it also makes it a little bit more obvious when that laser cap is on, because it's pretty easy to see. You can see that really well, whereas this one, it really sits recessed and kind of flush with the aperture there, so it makes it hard to see. And I have actually accidentally fired that laser up for a couple seconds with that thing on, which can damage the laser. Which comes to my next aspect. If you do that with this laser, it might do a little bit more damage to the laser itself because it has a reflective foil uh, kind of thing there. And I'm not sure if that's the greatest thing, especially because if this has a tendency to bump or anything or even just flex back into the beam... That could reflect right back in your eyes, so I may end up removing that. I think the reason that they put that there is to keep the beam from burning its way right through that little rubber cap, which makes total sense. Focusing mechanism is pretty loose on this one, slightly less loose than it was on the PLE Pro, but not bad. Um, it still takes just a little bit of, a little bit more force to turn that one, actually. That, that's pretty good. That, that's perfect. I like that. Safety is on the tail cap here. You click it, laser will turn off. You want batteries in there, you can't do anything. And you click it once more and, and the lights turn on. This is a very, very nice feeling button. I'm, I'm very, very happy with the feel that they installed in that button. It's very stiff and it feels very high quality. And typically you have the momentary on and constant on buttons on the laser. Now this laser does use the 16340 series cells. These little baby guys right here uses two of them. And it has a nice little notation there reminding you that they do go in reverse of most consumer battery electronics. So... The button is going to be against the tail cap. And when I first pulled this laser out of the box, I made the mistake of accidentally installing one of these guys, which fits pretty nicely in that host, actually. Um, turned the laser on, and it did fire up a very, very dim color. Hopefully I didn't damage the driver in any way. But uh, yeah, don't use these. They're not supposed to be used with these. They're supposed to be used with these in this particular unit. I do know that PLE Mini sometimes use the 18650 series, but this exact unit, the 1 Watt 520, does not. So let's go ahead and fire this little line up and do some beam and dot comparison. And we'll do a little bit of dark room lighting and fog room lighting a little bit later, as well as some burning videos. We're going to be using a green military surplus ammo can as our beam stop, which is pretty reliable for me. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. And all of these beams have already been focused into the finest point that they could possibly be on that ammo can. So there are the dots there. As you can see, the beams are not entirely visible during the daylight. Even looking down the axis of the laser, you can't see a whole lot of them, but they are there. The colors are probably a little washed out in the daylight as well. The camera freaks out with this much power available to it. Uh, you can see that the 520 nanometer actually has the brightest dot, at least it looks like it through my laser glasses and on my camera screen, which is pretty impressive considering that 520 nanometer is only 1 watt compared to its bigger brother here, the 3.5 watt 465. All right, so now you've shut off the lights, and you can see the beams just a little bit better in the dark lighting. And it looks really cool here on my screen. We'll also go down of the lasers and look down the axis towards the lasers. Again, this is clean air. There's no fog added to this room yet. And as far as the dots go, I have to say the 520 has a very, very, very nice divergence. It produces a very small rectangular slit probably about a sixteenth of an inch and maybe a quarter inch long versus versus the three and a half watt 465 
produces one a little closer to an eighth of an inch and probably about half an inch closer to an inch long. The only one of these that is completely circular is the 532 nanometer. That's because it's a DPSS diode. And what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and shut off the 465 nanometer as well as the Sage 3 watt 445. And we'll just do a direct comparison of the 520 nanometer to the 532 nanometer. And you can maybe see a little bit of a color difference there. It is indeed a mint green. But for those of you who are considering getting a green laser, and if that's your drawback because you want the greenest green possible, I assure you that 520 nanometer is a very, very green green. And to the naked eye, it's not too distinguishable. Cameras seem to actually be able to pick it up a little bit better than the naked eye can. This is more of a, a power comparison than anything else. That one watt beam is just absolutely insane. It's super, super awesome. I'm really happy that that can compare so nicely to a three and a half watt 465 and probably about a seven watt 445. It is significantly brighter than the Sage 3 watt, which I'll show you again here. And we'll go down beam of that. I'll give you one more look at that. Okay, so now we've added some fog to our dark room here. So we'll go ahead and fire the lasers up again. You should be able to see a little bit more of a beam each time. So that's the 465 first, then the 520, then the 445, and finally the last little 532, which I always have a hard time finding the button on. The 532 is the one that I'm holding. Unfortunately, without my little clip here, you have to hold down the button, which you would have to do with the momentary buttons, but thankfully all these other lasers have a constant on button, which is pretty nice. So these beams look absolutely gorgeous at night. Well, not at night, but I mean in a dark condition and with some fog going in the room. I think maybe uh, we'll go ahead and add just a little bit more fog here. You see a little bit of movement action there in the beams. I don't want to add too much because then it makes it really impossible to actually get this video done. This is a great example of how the 445 is not quite as visibly powerful as the 1 watt 520 or the 3.5 watt 465. The 445 in person does match pretty closely to the 465, but since the 465 is a brighter blue, not only is it a prettier, more appealing laser, but it is slightly brighter as well. Overall brightness, I'd have to say, the 465 and the 1 watt 520 are pretty close, but the 1 watt 520 has a little bit more of an appealing color in my opinion than the 465. Unfortunately, my camera is really not picking up any of this color properly, so I might have to do some uh, photography of this as well. So again, we have the 465 3.5 watt PLE Pro, the 1 watt 520 green PLE Mini, and the Sage 3 watt 445 there. I want to take a look at those dots as well. Unfortunately, it looks like this one got defocused a little bit, but that gives you a good example of that rectangular slit now that there's a little more fog to diffuse the excess light so my camera can actually pick it up. You see here, that one still looks like a circle until I zoom way in, you get an idea of what that beam actually terminates into. And this is the Sage 3 Watt. It's always been a teeny tiny little square, about one centimeter by one centimeter. I'm a really big fan of the way that beam terminates. All right, so last but not least, we'll be doing a little bit of burning testing with this laser. Something interesting I found out is that this laser's best burning area is actually about a foot or so in front of the aperture, which is a little bit farther out than some of the blue lasers I'm used to. And the first thing we'll be using for our burn test is a little bit of electrical tape, which I'll put just a touch of tension on, not any more than it would experience hanging under the own weight of its roll. Just because if you add more tension to the tape, it kind of accelerates the ability to cut and defeats the point of the test. So we'll draw the tape in and it cut through just like that, no problems. All right, the next thing we're gonna use is the border of a piece of white paper with some text on it. Um, black obviously accelerates heat and burn. So I'll try and just keep this right on the edge. We'll drag it into the beam this way and hold it still. And it looks like I may not have, there it goes. It punched through in about a second. I still may not have it in the precisely perfect point. 
there is the precisely perfect point right there. And as you can see, it does punch holes in the paper pretty quickly. And if you drug it slowly, it would cut a nice line in it. Definitely a lot slower than the 3 watt 445 or the 3 and a half watt 465 would do. But obviously this laser does have a whole lot less power, so you can't knock it for not being able to do quite as well as those lasers. Overall, pretty decent test.